Okay, so I weighed in my pack at the visitor center and it weighed in around 27 with food and water and I'm on the approach trail right now and right there are the falls that we're going to be hiking up. So I'm excited. It doesn't feel real, but here we go. For the record, we're not even to the stairs yet. And it's actually kind of hard, but it's really pretty. So there are three steps and then it says 175 steps, difficulty strenuous. So I don't know if they're counting those three, but <laughs> we'll see. Okay, so the 175 wasn't that bad. We're getting ready to do 425. And then we'll hit the top of Falls Lodge. Okay, so, oh, I can't see it. It's all backwards. We just finished the 425 stairs. Now we're gonna do a couple more. Okay, so we've already met two other through hikers. They're behind us. Um, they were Naomi and Tom, and Tom was carrying a big, uh, big cardboard box full of mandarin oranges. So I'm going to see if I see him at camp tonight, if I can give him his trail name, and it'll be oranges. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, stay tuned. Well, it started out as a clear day. Now it's all fog. It's kind of creepy looking, but also kind of cool. Maybe we'll get lucky and it'll clear up by the time we get to the top. Okay, so we're stopping for lunch. It's like 12.40 or something like that. Um, I think we have almost five miles left to go. So we still have a ways to go, but I don't want to wait until I get to the top. So I'm going to eat it. First white blaze. Okay, so that's my first white blaze, and we're at Springer Mountain. And there's not much of a view. So we're staying at Springer Mountain Shelter tonight, and we did decide to go ahead and um, uh, sleep in the shelter and not in our tents. It's like 0.2 miles on the Appalachian Trail, so day zero <laughs> uh, is off to a good start. We've already eaten, it's like 7 o'clock, and now we're ready for bed. <laughs> Just left Springer Mountain Shelter, and I slept like maybe 20 minutes last night because my feet were frozen the entire time. I'm really glad I didn't set up my tent though, because if you look behind me, everything's frozen. And it would have really sucked to have to put that away, because it did rain last night. Um, but yeah, my feet are still frozen, but I decided to get hiking because um, I'm hoping I'll warm up. <laughs> um, this morning, when I put my clothes on for hiking, I was wearing literally every layer that I own, with the exception of like my sleep clothes, which is a shirt, some pants, and some socks, and um, a pair of underwear and one extra pair of socks. Everything else is on. But now my puffy jacket is uh, in my pack so I don't overheat because I really don't want to stop, 
because my feet are freezing. Um, breakfast this morning was a frozen granola bar. It was the grossest breakfast I've ever had in my life. I was going to cook oatmeal, but I just didn't want to sit around camp any longer. I wanted to get warmed up. And you know the ironic part? It's supposed to be 53 and sunny today. So, yeah, anyways, I'll show you guys what I'm walking through. That is a Widowmaker if I've ever seen one. <laughs> right over the AT. There's like hardly anything holding it up. Earlier, when I started this hike this morning, I was frozen. Um, it's still, still really frozen. Um, but I'm not, so getting moving first thing was the right decision for me. My feet are warm, <laughs> I can feel my toes, my fingers are warm, it's great. When I first started, I had to stop every like three minutes and just stick my hands on like the back of my neck to warm them up. Um, but Feeling a lot better now. Um, so I mentioned the, the granola bar I had for breakfast. That was supposed to be my snack. <laughs> but I really didn't want to sit around camp with freezing toes and fingers and cook my oatmeal, which was supposed to be my breakfast. So when I stop for lunch, I need to get better at holding this camera. <laughs> when I stop for lunch, that's when I'm going to cook my oatmeal, and hopefully it'll be pretty good. Um, I don't know when the sun's going to come out. It's still foggy, but it's really pretty. I, uh, I already had my first water crossing. It wasn't much. My shoes are still dry. <laughs> um, but yeah, just making my way slowly. I've already been passed by two people who got out of camp way later than me. And I'm sure I'll be passed by more. <laughs> but um, my knee was also really hurting me at the beginning of this hike uh, this morning. But it's feeling really good right now, even though I'm on a slight downhill. So I'll keep checking. Well, it's definitely warmed up. Um, I wouldn't exactly call it sunny yet, but definitely warmer. I got to take my gloves off and my hat, and I really wanted to take my raincoat off, but it's this weird drizzly sprinkle <laughs> going on out here. Um, I just don't want to get my clothes too wet, so I have it unzipped to give me more ventilation because frog togs do not have ventilation. Plan is to hike around eight miles to Hawk Mountain Shelter. Um, you know, I decided to go with my original plan and take five days to get to Neil's Gap. And then I thought I was gonna do it in four, that I was gonna do two 11 days starting out and decided to give my body a chance to get used to this because I don't usually hike every day but it's really pretty out here just a bunch of pine trees and rhododendrons and going up hills I'm breathing heavy you know it's funny they say that doing a through hike 
it's more mental than it is physical. And although I think I'll be saying something different on Blood Mountain. I think it's true. Last night, um, when I couldn't sleep because my feet were cold, you know, I was sitting there thinking like, man, am I sure I'm cut out for this? You know, I had knee pain on the first day and uh, I was freezing and couldn't sleep. But, you know, I, I can't turn around on the first day. And I want to make it all the way to Maine. So that's what I'm going to do. So far I seem to be the slowest hiker out here. Which, for now, when I'm planning low mile days, isn't so bad. But I think it's going to get a little discouraging if I can't keep up with the pack. But, you know, because it sucks. If you meet cool people and you're hiking with them, and then you can't keep up with them, so you get left behind. And when you're always the slowest person, it makes you wonder <laughs> if you're going too slow. But right now, first week or two, doesn't matter. It's not a race. Just one step in front of the other. All the way to Maine. I'll get there eventually. Even if it's on the last day that Baxter State Park is open. I'll get there. So I was sitting here. Oh, walking. <laughs> Deciding if I should stop for lunch. It's like 11.51 and Because I am really hungry But uh, I thought I still had 4.6 miles to go to the Hawk Mountain campsite Because that's what Gut Hooks was telling me For those of you who don't know, Gut Hooks is um, uh, I downloaded a map of the AT and it lets me use GPS and track where I am and it tells me where water sources and campsites and everything are. It'll tell you based on your location how far to the next point, ooh, the next point of interest. So it was telling me I had 4.6. I don't. <laughs> I have just under two miles. So I passed of vlogs that would have been a great lunch spot thinking I had 4.6 miles to do but I better get my butt moving well I'm gonna ca I'm gonna get to camp really really early but I'm excited I'm gonna eat food I literally just finished filming that last clip and I found a nice leg to sit on let me tell you this sit pad it's like an ounce and it is so worth it because my butt gets to stay dry and warm. So I'm going to eat lunch and then probably hike for another hour and get to camp. After eating lunch, I hiked a little bit further on my way to Hawk Mountain campsite or shelter, one of the two. We'll see how far I want to go. And I had my first trail magic. So there were some people who were locals and some uh, southbound through hikers who just finished last year doing trail magic. So that was really cool. Got to talk to them for a little bit and get some advice. So thank you so much, you guys, for the trail magic. It was great. It was great talking to you. Okay, so. Um, I spent the night last night at Hawk Mountain Shelter. There were four people up top and four of us were down on the bottom level. Um, I actually slept because I was toasty. I think it only got down to around 40 degrees last night. Um, next up. 
But yeah, I slept really well, so my 10 degree quilt served me well last night. <laughs> um, woke up, had breakfast, I'm on the trail now. I'm going to Gooch Mountain Shelter, which is an eight-ish mile day. I'll have to look up the exact mileage. But, uh, yeah, I, uh, may have earned my trail name last night. We'll see if it sticks, and if it does, I'll let you guys know what it is. Um, but it was, it was pretty funny, so. Okay, I know it's not lettuce, but it looks like lettuce, and I want to eat it. Not going to. I don't know what it is, but I'm hungry. I'm moving a little slower than I wanted to. It's lunch time. I don't know when I'm going to stop for lunch, though. But, uh, this morning, I was worried that the trail... Ooh, I need to hold the camera better. This morning, I was worried that the trail would be more like a river, less like a trail. That's not the case. It's just a little muddy. But anyways, I, uh... I took newspaper bags and I put them on both my feet because my shoes aren't waterproof. Um, <laughs> I think if I want to make it work, I've got to get some rubber bands or something because by the time <laughs> I checked on them, they were all bunched up at the front of my shoe. Um, so, I don't know. I guess if you want dry feet, there's no such thing as dry feet out here, but you can try waterproof socks and those will probably work better for you. Generally, you don't want waterproof shoes because those take forever to dry. So, I don't have the Gore-Tex shoes. I used to, but they really do take forever to dry. Um, last two nights, I've been staying in the shelter, and one thing, <laughs> one thing nobody ever talks about, at least in any videos I've watched, especially if you're a girl, is how do you change? Because, <laughs> you know, I'm used to changing in my tent. Well, I've been changing in my sleeping bag, but the problem with that is I don't get to do a tick check because you can't see you when you're in your sleeping bag. Um, and also, it's just kind of awkward, you know. I was down there with a bunch of guys. Um, they're all really nice guys. But, you know, changing in a shelter right next to them. It's a little weird. So, I might tent tonight. We'll see. And I can do a tick check. And not feel bad about getting up early. Because this morning it was like 6 a.m. And I was ready to get up. But I didn't want to disturb anyone. I was still kind of cold and drizzly out there. And I'm such a slow hiker that, uh... You know, I gotta get an early start. Um, it's not... It's not so important right now that I get early starts. Because I'm doing low miles. But once I get up there and start doing... 13, and 15, and 17, and heck, even 20. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm going to need to make sure I get early starts. Last night I also tried to practice throwing up a bear bag using the PCT method. And I couldn't get the rock bag over the tree limb. So I'm going to see if I can practice some more tonight. Because once I get out of Georgia... There are no more bear boxes. Um, I think the Smokies have bear cables, but you gotta go through a couple other shelters before you get to the bear cables. And then after that, there's nothing that I know of. So I'm gonna work on my skills. Not everyone at camp laugh at me. I was the only one practicing last night, but I don't know, we'll see how it goes getting really sick here so I'm gonna and my arm's getting tired <laughs> so I'm gonna turn this off and get to hiking okay so it's 
that time. But I'm not a Gucci Mountain shelter. And I'm tenting for the first time. Um, I could have slept in the shelter, but I wanted to tent. Hopefully it doesn't rain. Um, yeah, it was a long day. Um, my knees were kind of locking up on me. But doing okay. I'm gonna get ooh, the light. I'm gonna get some different knee braces when I get to Neil's Gap. So I did Hawk Mountain to Beach Mountain Shelter and then tomorrow I go to I want to say it was Justice Creek campsite. Could be wrong. Um, but anyways, that's the plan for tomorrow, and then after that, it goes straight into Neil's Gap. Um, Neil Gap. Uh, so yeah, this is my tent. It's the tarp tent notch. And what I do, um, I hang my headlamp from one of the little hooks in there, and then back behind me, that's the case that my sport came in. Um, so, I put my glasses in there. They just barely fit. That way I don't crush them in the middle of the night. Because I don't have... I don't know if you can see it, but I don't have a ton of room. It's like a little coffin. So, anyways, it's time for bed. I'll see you guys in the morning. And, yep. Yeah. Bye. Okay, so I take that back. I hike into Lance Creek Camps um, tomorrow night for 8.1 miles, and then I go to Neil Cap, uh, which that should be a shorter day. So, anyways, I'll see ya. Good morning. So, I spent the night last night at Gooch Mountain Shelter, and my goal is to get to Lance Creek campsite. Um, this morning I heard that one of the Ridge Runners said that you can still camp at Gerard Gap without a bear can, but one step past it and you need it. Um, Lance Creek is 8.1 miles from Gooch Mountain Shelter. Um, so, I'm at least going that far, and maybe, if I feel like it, I'll go to Gerard Gap. And then I'll have, I want to say 5.4 miles into Neil Gap, which is my next resupply. Um, I tented last night, which was good. It was nice kind of having my own space and not feeling bad about my alarm going off in the morning telling me to get up. I always have to start hiking before everyone else if I want to make decent time. It's like almost 8.30 right now. Um, my knee's still giving me some pain, but I'm going uphill so it's not too bad. Um, what else? I should have eaten more food the last couple days. Um, because my pack's really full, but I originally planned four days worth of food, and then I had to stretch it five. So, I was a little conservative, so now I'm carrying way more than I need to be. So, I'm going to eat with it, whatever the heck I want today. Because it'll be a short day in Tenille Gap. Last night, there were a lot of people at the shelter. I met some cool people. Um, I met this guy named Slinger, and he, <laughs> he's interesting. He, uh, he's done many, many sections of the AT, but this year he's through hiking it. And uh, he was telling me how he always has a hard time getting a hitch. Unless he has someone else with him, because he looks too big and scary for, for people to want to pull over for him. 
Um, but he's a nice guy. Met some other people too. Um, hiked a little bit yesterday with, it was like 10 minutes, but still. <laughs> I hiked with a guy who goes by the name Squirrel. Um, he seemed pretty nice too. Who else? There's more. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll get better at holding the camera. But, yeah, I guess that's all for now. Okay, so... It's like 12 o'clock and I only have 3.3 miles to go and uh, it's just woody up and got to call home which was awesome. I heard that uh, when my husband got home our dog Taz was looking for me to walk in the door too so I'm excited for them to come visit me at some point. I uh, had some trail magic at Woody Gap. It was awesome. I had a brownie, half a clementine, and some potato chips. That was awesome. The ladies there were very nice. Um, sounds like a couple of them have actually hiked the trail. So they come back I know at least one of them's from Evansville, Indiana. Um, so they just drive up here and do it every year. So thank you so much, ladies. It is greatly appreciated. Um, so yeah, today's been the first day where we've had clear skies and not a lot of fog. So we've had some pretty good views. Um, that was awesome. I've been hiking most of the day with Sparky and Uncle Rin. They have a pretty good pace. They're slower on the uphills, I'm slower on the downhills, so we catch up to each other. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're really nice guys. Hopefully I get to hike with them for a little bit more. Uh, I am considering a zero day at Neil Gap Mountain Crossings. Uh, just give my knee a chance to normalize and feel a little bit better before pushing on, but we'll see. A lot of it'll depend on what Blood Mountain does to me tomorrow. So. Looking forward to it though. Well, I'm going to keep hiking and I'll see you guys when I'm at camp. Look at that view. That is gorgeous. I get to look at that for the next six months. Well, not that exact view, but you get my point. My trail name seems like it's sticking, so I'll tell you what it is and how I got it. My trail name is Giggles, <laughs> and I got it my second night out 
at Hawk Mountain Shelter. Woo. Uh, I had I had a really, really, really funny dream. Oddly enough, I don't remember what that dream was now. <laughs> but I found it so hilarious that I woke up out of my sleep and just started cracking up. <laughs> and in the process, I woke everybody else in the shelter up. So, next morning, they decided <laughs> that my trail name would be Giggles. So, that is what I'll be going by from now on. I've already started signing the uh, shelter logs with it. So, yeah, that's how I got my trail name. Thank you so much to whoever came through and took care of these blowdowns so that we didn't have to crawl all over them. Thank you so much. Because this would have been a nightmare. This is the song that never ends. It goes on and on, my friends. Some people started singing it, not knowing what it was. They'll continue singing it forever, just because it's a song that never out ends. <laughs> my knee. Oh. There's a campsite. I hope I don't have to hike back up and use it. This is the song that <laughs> never ends. Yes, it goes on and on, my friends. Some people started singing, not knowing what it was. They'll continue singing it forever just because this is the song that never ends. That goes on and on, my friends. Some people started singing it, not knowing what it was. They'll continue singing out forever just because. This is the song that never ends. So I found my campsite for tonight. I'm at Lance Creek and, um, I was actually the first one here. I think a lot of people decided to push on, but I just want to stay here. I don't want to go any further, so I'll have a 7.3 mile day tomorrow in Tamil Gap. Um, on my way down here, my knees were really hurting me, so I made up a song. It started with, this is the song that never ends, and now it's, this is the trail that never ends. The site goes on and on, my friends. <laughs> so that got me down the mountain. Um, I'm going to have an early dinner. It's like 3 o'clock. And then I'll have second dinner. And maybe even third. I don't know. But I've got a lot of food to eat. So might as well enjoy it. See ya. We are eating ramen right now. This is the only... Well, I guess there's a couple others. But this is the only ramen that I can find that's vegetarian it has to be the top ramen brand and it has to be the original so I like it a lot I'm going to add some textured vegetable protein nutritional yeast and dried mushrooms should be good look at that view so, I stayed at Lance Creek Shelter, or not shelter, Lance Creek Restoration Area, so just the campground last night. Isn't that pretty? Um, and camped at a spot with Uncle Rin and Sparky, and then a girl uh, who I just met last night who has an Australian Shepherd. She goes by Quebec. Um, and that was nice. And today is Blood Mountain. Um, 
once we get to Neil Gap, we're going to try and get a cabin at the, the Blood Mountain Cabins. It's just a little bit past there. Um, so, it sleeps four. Uncle Ren and Sparky are already in there. We all agreed that whoever gets there first reserves it, and then we'll all pay out. Um, hopefully we can get a fourth person to join us. So it'll be a little cheaper. It's like 72 for the cabin itself. So 24 if it's just three of us and a little bit less otherwise. Okay, you see that mountain right there? The really, really tall one? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's Blood Mountain and that's what I'm hiking today. <laughs> it's the tallest point in Georgia, in the, on the Georgia portion of the AT. Someone carved out a little seat for you to sit on. <laughs> Has a little footrest too. I haven't had breakfast yet, so I just stopped for breakfast because my fingers were freezing. One of the guys gave me this um, my first night out. It's amazing. <sighs> Mint chocolate crunch. I have like four point something to do until Neil's. Anyways. This is the view from the top of Blood Mountain. Just climbed up a little hill of rocks that was just over the other way from the last view. It's on top of Blood Mountain. This is awesome. Totally worth the climb. Six months. <laughs> This is the inside of the Blood Mountain Shelter. This little window with a nice view. And you walk out here. What used to be a fireplace. Another window. Okay, I just started going down Blood Mountain and so far everything is stone. So I'm glad it's not rainy, otherwise it would be really slick. So I'm still hiking down Blood Mountain. I haven't been hiking very long. That's the way I came. And that's the way I have to go. The white way is way out there. Telling me I have to go down that. On the bright side, it's a beautiful view. To be honest, I'm a little concerned I'm gonna kill my knee a little bit more, but hopefully I make it down safely. <laughs> I just came from up there. Northbounders, watch your knees and pray that when you go over it, it isn't raining. Southbounders, I'm so sorry. <laughs> there are a couple of spots where I had to throw my trekking poles down just to uh, get down and then use my hands to not fall, so. Anywho. So, one thing to be aware of on Blood Mountain, you're going to come to a fork. Um, and I just came from it. But uh, there aren't any white blazes telling you which way to go. So, go right and then walk a few steps and then look behind you, and there should be a white blaze. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it, but that tree right there, that'll be the white blaze telling you you're going in the right direction. Um, there was zero indication as to which way I was supposed to go, so I just picked it and I went, and then I looked behind me and finally found a white blaze. I still haven't seen one on um, the northbound side of a tree yet, but it's okay. Um, about 1.4 from Neil's Gap and real human food. I see a road. Road means food. There's the famous tree. Right through your boots up if you could.
Okay, so we are in the beaver cabin. Uh, say hi. Hello. <laughs> Introduce yourself. So I'm, I'm Uncle Ren. I'm a pass-through hiker, and uh, yeah, I'm pretty much planning to go to Katahdin again, to the Holy Mountain, <laughs> and look forward to it. And you're going to make sure I get there, right? Yeah, try to. Yeah, keep that <laughs> attitude up. I mean, if you're going to get there, you got to... You gotta get the right attitude going, and yeah, yeah. I think I think you're doing good. <laughs> All right, so that's the bathroom. We can't go in there right now. We have a fridge and a microwave, basically a full kitchen. We have TV, and then back here is. Hello, I'm recording. Is that okay? It's oh, okay. Yeah, I'm just. You, know, my you want to introduce here. yourself? Hi, I'm Jessica. <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah I, I just, that's fine. <laughs> we just met. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the bed that we're going to share tonight. And then upstairs there's a single. And then Sparky, who's in the shower, is going to sleep on the pull-out couch. And I am in whatever clothes I can find. Because um, we're doing laundry. Good morning. So I stayed at Blood Mountain Cabins last night and uh, it was lovely. They had Wi-Fi at the shop, but it took forever to get anything to back up to Google. So my husband still doesn't have the footage he needs to get the first video out. I'm hoping when I get to top of Georgia Hostel, you know, I'll be able to spend the night and use the Wi-Fi while I sleep. Then I won't have to sit there for hours on end for it to all back up. Goal today is 11.5 miles to Low Gap Shelter. And then I'll have two lower mileage days around like 7 and 8. And then I'll have another 11, I want to say. And then I'll be at Top of Georgia Hostel. So four days. My pack feels super heavy. I think I have too much food, but we'll find out. This time I won't be limiting myself and how much food I can eat at any given time. So maybe it's just right. We'll see. I got started at I'd say like 8.30 or something this morning, but no, not 8.30, it's 7.40. <laughs> um, so yeah, hiking alone right now. I'm sure Uncle Ren and Sparky will catch up to me. So, it's all for now. I've got Blue Mountains to my left. And not quite blue mountains covered in fog to my right. <laughs> so I don't really need a break right now, but there was this little side path um, off the trail and I decided to just sit down and enjoy the view. Um, let me show you what I'm looking at. That is my view that I'm going to enjoy while I snack. It's not even lunchtime yet, but 
I haven't been taking enough breaks, so I figured this would be good to rest my knees and just enjoy it. There's a baby mouse in the middle of the trail. It's so cute. Baby mouse. Why does he walk so funny? Hey. So I just came from my third trail magic. There were some guys down there. And they had various hiker foods and um, they actually had some knit hats that they were giving away for free that people from churches all over make for the hikers. Um, he was saying the benefit of those hats is they aren't as tightly knit. So they aren't going to retain moisture as much, so you have less of a chance of hypothermia. But those guys down there were really nice. They actually uh, help coordinate trail days in Damascus, Virginia. Um, and they were giving us lots of good advice about, you know, if we have any injuries, what to do about that anybody needed to go up to town to get something checked out you know they were there to offer to drive you um, which is really great I uh, sprayed some icy hot on my knees which thankfully actually have been doing a lot better I got some new knee braces which are treating me well um, I'm going to fill this hard, but yeah, I got some new knee braces, got some icy hot, oh, he gave me like a six pack of these hot pads for me to try tonight and see how I like them, and if I like them I can buy more when I get to a town, um, but yeah, they were really great. So, well, I, there, there's a wealth of information down there, and they even had um, this little muscle roller that you could use, so I used that on my legs to try and ease some of that tension, and that was lovely. <laughs> so, we got like 5.5 miles to the shelter. But he was saying that there's only like four spots in the shelter. And there's not much in the way of campsites. So I might have to hike another 0.5 to a tent site that's after the shelter. So it might become a 12 mile day. But what's another 0.5, right? <laughs> in the grand scheme of things, that's not too bad. At least it's not like an extra two miles. Not ready for a 14 mile day. I'll catch you later. That is probably one of the best views that I've had thus far. I can see for miles. There's just this whole big valley and all the mountains surrounding it. you hear that? That's my backpack squeaking. Yep. <laughs> you know, that's why so many times in a, in little clips I film, I'm looking behind me. Because sometimes I think somebody's coming up behind me and I want to let them pass. Usually it's not 
person with my backpack telling me <laughs> squeakity squeak. Not much farther to Low Gap. The original plan was to get to Dix Creek in four days. Today's Thursday. I think that's the 12th. 412. Um, Friday's supposed to be nice. Saturday, it's supposed to rain. And Sunday, it's supposed to be thunderstorms. So, I'm considering pushing on a little bit more from Low Gap Shelter and camping. And then doing bigger miles tomorrow and then getting to Dick's Creek on Saturday because Saturday is just supposed to be rain. I don't mind the rain. I haven't yet hiked in a thunderstorm though. I'm not sure that I'm ready for it. I know I will eventually but it'd be really nice just to get in an extra day so we'll see. I might just stop at Low Gap and then do a big miles tomorrow. Good morning. Stayed the night last night in my tent at Low Gap Shelter. And um, heard some cool owls. <laughs> Um, early this morning, uh, today's Friday, and Saturday and Sunday, it's supposed to rain, and Sunday, well, Saturday starting at 6 p.m. and through Sunday, it's supposed to be thunderstorms. I woke up this morning, and I could barely move my knees. And everyone's talking about taking a zero for Saturday, but then potentially not Sunday. I don't know. And I don't know what I should do. I know I need to make decisions for myself, for my own hike. It's just really discouraging because I feel like I'm going to get left behind because I'm always one of the very first people out of camp and everyone who leaves one or two hours after me beats me to camp. It's really hard being a slow hiker. Yeah. And it's a beautiful day out today and I should be happy but hard day. And I think uh, Uncle Ron and Sparky are probably going to push on to the Cheese Factory campsite. That's like 13.4. And then they'll do 13 the next day and hopefully beat the thunderstorms that start at 6 on Saturday. That was my plan up until I woke up this morning and had all the knee pain. So I might go to Unicoi Gap, I think that's how you say it, <laughs> um, makes it a 10 mile day, and if other people are camping out there, I might camp out at the Gap, it's really not a good idea to camp by a major road, but if I'm not the only one I'll do it, but, and then I would hitch or get a shuttle in. Saturday morning, and then stay Saturday night. And not go back on the trail until they're late Sunday or Monday. So, I don't know. I'll figure it out. Hey you guys. So, I made it all the way to Unicoi Gap 
and got a hitch into Hiawassee and I'm at the Holiday Inn Express. Um, look at this room. Like, there's a huge bed, a desk that I don't need, TV. There's a couch. There's a couch. <laughs> um, what else? It's a little refrigerator and a microwave and that's this cabinet space. And look at my bathroom. Oh, I'm so excited. So I, uh, I booked it thinking that the rate was going to be like 70 bucks a night and that's not true. <laughs> Uh, my original bill was like 120 something for tonight and then like 240 for tomorrow night and the lady felt bad for me so she asked her manager <laughs> if she could give me a special rate um, after I freaked out and uh, they gave it to me for a lot less. Um, still, still not the 70 bucks a night that I was hoping for, which was already more than what I wanted to pay, but the, uh, the budget in was booked up. Budget in's like 55 bucks a night. So I am staying here all alone. I have this whole king bed to myself and I'm so excited. <laughs> um, I got my first hitch. Uh, it was with, I didn't get their names, but uh, two college students um, who were on their way to a wine tour for um, the guy's uh, dad's birthday. Um, and they were really cool. They had like this guitar in the back of their truck and stuff. Um, I only got turned down by like five cars and then they pulled over and gave me the hitch. Um, they were both really nice. Thank you guys for... Um, taking me all the way up here and I'm just really excited. I'm taking double zeros for my knees just to recoup and stuff. So I said bye to um, Uncle Rin and, and Sparky and um, Jessica. They're all pushing through um, to either Cheese Factory tent site or um, Trey Mountain Shelter and then they're going to try and beat the thunderstorms that start Saturday night. Oh, sorry guys, the lighting's awful, <laughs> but yeah, they're going to try and beat the thunderstorms that start Saturday night, and then Sunday it's supposed to be awful, so I've got it booked up for Friday night and Saturday night, and then I'll figure something out for Sunday. I might be able to hike in the evening, Sunday evening. If not, I'll go to Tapa Georgia Hostel, hopefully, and spend the night there, and then hike, um, but... Yeah, I'm taking double zeros, so I'm excited. Um, yeah, I'm, I don't know what's happening after these two nights. I need to find a place to hang out, but I'm going to go wash my hands because my hands are dirty from putting away my tent. Like, can you see that? Can you see that grime? I don't know if the camera shows it, but it's disgusting. So... Yeah, I promise I use hand sanitizer and I promise that I rinse off my hands to the best of my abilities, but I'm a dirty hiker. What can I say? Um, so yeah, got my first hitch. I actually, um, there's a guy, I, I walked up to two guys um, who were both at The Gap, and one one of them hiked in 2017, and he was giving me some tips about hitching. He's like, make sure you smile. Um, so he helped me get my first hitch, and then I just hopped in um, with Adam. But yeah, they were super nice, and um, hitching isn't as scary as people make it out to be, especially around hiker towns. So everyone back home, you know, it's not the end of the world. I did hitch alone. I didn't hitch with anyone else, but they were really nice people. <laughs> See you later. Okay, so most hikers, when they get to town, will go to a big restaurant and eat all the junk food. I went to the grocery store and I got everything to make myself a salad. So not only is it cheaper, but it's a lot better for you and it's real food. 
I'm very excited. So today is Saturday. Um, it's my first zero day. And this is what you do on a zero day when you're hurting. You ice bolt your knee. <laughs> and then the front side of your, uh, your ankle. Um, and then you have a big gear explosion over there. <laughs> okay, that's better. So I woke up and had... Oh, my hair looks funny. Uh, I woke up and had breakfast downstairs and um, saw some other hikers down there. Um, one of them I had met before, uh, Gigi, and then he had his group of friends he was hiking with with him. Um, and then I met a girl named Jamie, who's actually um, pretty close from... Uh, pretty much the same area of Ohio as I am, so it was nice talking to her and uh, getting to know her a little bit. Um, we, what was it? Oh, everyone else here that I've met so far that's a hiker got off at uh, Dick's Creek Gap, um, and I got off at Unicoi, so they're a couple days ahead of me, but Anywho, uh, it was nice seeing them. And then I actually ran into Tim, who also goes by Goat, who I met my second night. I think it was my second night I met him um, at Hawk Mountain Shelter. Um, so he's he's just section hiking, and uh, it was it was surprising running into him today. So I didn't think I'd ever see him again. <laughs> I guess that's just the way the trail works, but anywho, I want to sit here and ice my knees and my ankle and maybe find something to watch on TV. So it should be a pretty good zero day. I'm honestly not planning on leaving this room at all <laughs> for the rest of the day. Um, I have enough food here that I don't have to leave and like go to a restaurant or anything. So we'll see though. If, if you see a video update later of me out and about, then I guess I changed my mind. But for now, I'm just chilling. So, should be a pretty good zero day. Okay, so up there, right there behind me, is the falls. Um, in a few minutes, we'll be going up the stairs. I'm filming in vertical. <laughs> Hi, self. Don't do that. That's bad.